An organization by the name of Allianz Anti-Traffic, or AAT, has been working tirelessly in Vietnam since its founding in 2001 to combat the trafficking of women and children in Vietnam and the Southeast Asian region. Yet the contributions to social work in Vietnam of its founder and CEO, Georges Blanchard, dates back to 1992. From George's initiative, AAT is the first and one of the main organizations in Vietnam to succeed in a comprehensive anti-trafficking program, which includes regional rescuing, repatriation, rehabilitation, community reintegration, continuous follow-up, and community education. Hello and welcome to this edition of Talk Vietnam. The founder of Allianz Anti-Traffic is a man who has dedicated the past 26 years of his life to living and doing social work here in Vietnam. He is George Blanchard and we are very lucky to welcome him to our studio today to share more about his inspiring journey of bringing positive changes to many people here in Vietnam. Thank you very much, George, for joining us. Yes. Now, I understand that 2018 marks 17 years of uh, AAT, or Allianz Anti-Traffic, officially starting, and you also officially beginning to work with the Ministry of Public Security. Uh, how do you feel looking back on this milestone? The work of, uh, against trafficking. Traffic means the, the, uh, many countries are involved into the cause and the cases, and uh, of course, I, I need to working with the, the, the national level, it, and uh, especially to work with the police. And uh, so, uh, they, they was very welcome. I remember the, the first day in 2001, the first meeting we have together. They are very, very welcome my program, and they say at this time we not yet have any uh, action against this problem and we will try with you if it is okay or not. For now, I, I continue to meet my, my partners in the police and, and we say together, wow, our work was very good, very efficient. Looking back now to that point in time, uh, how did you become aware of Vietnamese people and Vietnamese um, women and children being involved in trafficking abroad? In 1993, Yes, because I opened a school for street children, children. And one time, two of the children of the school disappeared. Oh, really? Yes. And uh, we called the police, and the police rescued the two children on the border with Cambodia. Oh, wow. And uh, the children to bring them at school. And, and she say, uh, your mother is stuck, uh, your mother sent me, uh, and children just trust because they don't know. So that was my first experience. And I think, wow, we faced a big problem. And uh, I need to, to develop something uh, about that. And effectively, in, it was in 93, but I drew my first project in 98. I lost five years to learn what is the activity. I go to Thailand to learn, because Thailand, Thailand have a longer experience. When was the first time you saw Vietnamese people abroad, um, in brothels, in places? Yes, it was in Cambodia. And uh, in order to understand my, my work, more than 10 years I investigate in brothel. Something has to play the, the, the role of client. And uh, in Cambodia is very famous. The, the place in Vietnam we call the, the Khe Som Hue Mot is the, the Sphai Pak area. And Sai Pak it was a village only with prostitution of children, Viet Vietnamese children. Yes, I'm speaking about thousands of children. The two younger girls I meet, they have six years old. Yes, and mm. they were prostituted in the place. This is not acceptable. And I say, yes, we will work against this problem. I have partner in Cambodia. And after years, we, we, we broke the place. In uh, Cambodia, we opened one center for Vietnamese children before to repatriate them. And uh, we rescue them in the place in Cambodia. They go in the center. After that, we make the documents for the repatriation. We work with IOM, of course, and with uh, the embassy of Vietnam to, uh, to uh, prepare their return. 
if I may go back to to your experience of of visiting this brothel, how was your feeling? You know, when you found out there were so many Vietnamese children there and seeing the sight, how, how was it for you? What were the thoughts going through your head? Yes, that that it's the the feeling I still have today uh, when I thinking about is uh, I can say uh, five or six years. I, I don't want to do any investigation again. I, I cannot survive to the horror of the, 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 the situation. So uh, when I go to, to some brothel, uh, the, the, the Mama San, they call, they call the, 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 the PIM, yes, the Mama the PIM. San, uh, she say, uh, do, you like, do you like girls? Do you like boys? Uh, maybe you like very young uh, children? Uh, we have very young children. Oh, you want baby? We have baby. It's, it is impossible to imagine that exists. But they, 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 they sell that as, as services. But, but how you imagine people can buy it, buy that? The problem is not the offer, the problem is the clients for me. And uh, many, many times I feel I will be die. I remember in one investigation with my uh, colleague in, uh, in uh, Thailand, uh, Alliance at Traffic Thailand. We go together, we go to, uh, to uh, a very big area of prostitution in the border between Thailand and uh, Malaysia. Yes. And uh, in this border, we investigate also with the uh, police of the Malaysia. We find 5,000 Chinese girls, 3,000 Vietnamese girls. And uh, this is one village only for prostitution. Many times we're coming for investigation and, and I feel very afraid if people understand my uh, objective to coming to the place. I very afraid people force me or to simply kill. Over the years, Allianz Anti-Traffic has collaborated with the Vietnamese Ministry of Public Security, embassies in 17 nations and police forces in various Southeast Asian countries. The combined network has rescued and carried out the first official repatriations of Vietnamese cases from Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore and Laos. As of the end of 2017, the organization had supported over 5,500 women, children and men victims of trafficking in their reintegration post-rescue. Over 26 years, AAT has provided support to over 60,000 women and minors involved in prostitution, training some 1,300 civil servants and social workers in sex education and prevention of trafficking. The, the organization takes care of the victims. Uh, from that first rescue, how were the victims, uh, you know, when you first brought them back? What were some of the impacts that, that you noticed right away uh, that some of these years of prostitution had on really young children? Yes. Um, I also need to say one thing. The young children was uh, 15 years ago a lot. But for now, it's decreasing a lot. Now, it's many uh, young girls, 18. All of them have the traumatized. They out. The first thing they want is to back home. They don't want to stay into a shelter or something like that. For me, I, I, I look Vietnamese very strong people. This is something as incredible. So today, they, they, they meet something very hard, they're very difficult. But tomorrow is another life. I something they are they have ability to switch. Mm. But I think the trauma is still inside. Back in those days, after the repatriation, how does uh, Alliance uh, Anti Traffic support the victims? Yes, when we uh, meet the girls, uh, if they are repatriated from foreign countries, we meet them at the airport, and uh, we have uh, officers coming to them and propose all their their. Uh, the, the, the services she can request as a health, medical checkup, uh, treatment. Uh, if she wants to learn a job, uh, for that we have in Ho Chi Minh City, we have more than 200 different jobs they can learn. Mm. Because, yes, we use the official training center. 
other service is about law, if they need, if they want to complain, if they need us to make the complaint for the police, to bring the complaint to the police about their traffickers, if they know. Uh, also, uh, one service is very important is to help them to open mi micro business. Yeah. Yes, and um, we give some credits to help her, but we train her on business as to, to know to manage the money and uh, to make the, the business. We follow the girls many years. That is very important for us to understand because if we just check six months or one year, it's, it is very easy to say 80% of the girls appear stabilized. Mm. But after three years, four years, five years, ten years, you discover that now the girls are not stabilized. The reintegration is not very efficient. Mm. Most of the girls, they, they, they back 50%. And uh, I really thinking that because the, the, the negative psychological impact, they make them unstable. Do you have any stories of uh, any women or girls that your group has uh, been able to help and see uh, change um, and, and stabilize their, their life? Maybe I can remember one story, uh, Bin. She was rescued from, uh, from maybe Thailand or Malaysia, I not remember exactly. She was the first one girl into our shelter. shelter. Really? We opened the shelter with the Women Union, Union in 2002. And uh, she's learning her job very strongly. She won a hair styler. And she learned very well. She started to work. And uh, after five years, I have more news from her. Now she's working freelance. She has a salary around $2,000 per month. Wow, <laughs> yeah. hairstylist, yeah. Yes, because she's very good. A lot of people request her. Yeah. And so that is very successful. Now the most successful and stabilization people I know is all the girl was make family. Yes. Yes, they have, now they have baby. For me, the, the best thing about stabilization of a woman after uh, sexual exploitation is of course the family. Yes, that she, she can have, rebuild her life and they have, have husband, love. They have children, so they, they become in something normal. And for their psychology, their mental, this is the, the, the form of the stabilization. It is the form that the society gives to us. Family is the strong thing for us. Ngày đấy là mình đi bán cá, tự dưng có một người nữa đi nó bảo là chị ơi, um, hay là chị em mình ra Hà Nội làm nửa tháng ba bốn trăm cơ. Thì mình nghĩ cái cuộc sống lúc đó thì ba bốn trăm thì nó quá thiệt to. Mà chị đi buôn cá đấy, thì đi cá đêm đấy, thì chị được vài chục hay là mươi nghìn vậy là là, là mừng rồi. Nhưng bảo thôi thì cũng thử xem làm sao, chứ không ngờ là mình lại rơi vào cái con đường ấy cũng không nghĩ ra là vì cái ngày đấy cũng tin người lắm, nó chưa có cái nạn bắt cóc hoặc là nạn buôn người đâu, thì nó nói là Hà Nội nhưng mà lúc đấy là mình có biết Hà Nội là chỗ nào đâu em, chưa bao giờ đặt chân lên thành phố, thế là cứ nhắn về là bảo là đi ra Hà Nội làm, thì bố mẹ cứ biết là mình ra Hà Nội làm thôi, chứ không nghĩ là mình lại bị lừa vậy. After being rescued and repatriated, this woman was supported with an initial capital of around 500 US dollars from AAT. She opened a small flower vending business and was also provided with psychological support. She has become active in promoting awareness on the risks of trafficking in her community. <coughs> Nó, nó, nó như là vỡ hòa một cái không khí nào đấy ấy. Bây giờ là mình không nghĩ là mình khổ nữa. Ở bên cạnh đây mình thấy là có là xã hội này, cộng đồng này, rồi nhà chị em, gia đình này Đúng chị nói thật, chị cũng cảm ơn cuộc đời Thì chị nghĩ là mình không sống theo cái kiểu là giấu mình nữa Thì mình phải mang cái kiến thức đấy ra mình tuyên truyền cho mọi người Alongside supporting the victims, AAT has also provided employment opportunities within the organization for women of difficult circumstances.
This is a meeting of AAT's Pure Educators, a group that goes by the name of Sunflower. The women in the group serve as the organization's support and link to women who are sex workers in Ho Chi Minh City. The peer educators themselves come from various challenging backgrounds. They may have been victims of trafficking, and they may have also resorted to working in prostitution in the past due to their circumstances. This background gives the members the ability to, in part, identify with, connect, and better support those still in the sex industry. Nó giống như cái bản thân của mình là có một thời gian như mình đã từng trải qua những cái vấp ngã hay một cái gì đó, mình cảm thấy mình cũng khó khăn trong cái cộng đồng xã hội lớn. thì khi mình nghe đến đến cái công tác cộng đồng với chị em á, thì mình cảm thấy là họ cũng là một cái một trong những cái người như là cũng gặp khó khăn như mình lúc trước vậy đó, cho nên mình muốn giúp lại. The Sunflower Group supports sex workers through various methods, whether it be raising awareness of practices in safe sex, providing health care access, legal and mental support. Above all, however, the goal of the group is to help the women find new alternatives to prostitution. Nếu như có, có giống như là có một cái dự án mà cho các chị em học nghề miễn phí, thì mình sẽ giới thiệu các chị đến khi mà có một cái nghề ổn định rồi, thì lúc đó chị có công ăn việc làm ổn định thì giữa cái hướng hoàng lương nó sẽ rất là cao. Mình cũng đưa ra nhiều cái định hướng để cho họ bớt đi cái phần nào cái tâm lý của họ là họ có thể họ làm lại từ đầu. Họ có thể giống như là những cái người khác họ vẫn lao động chân chính, họ, họ có thể là họ bỏ nghề, họ có một cái cuộc sống mưu sinh để tốt hơn. It is the hope of George and AAT that the network of women supporting women in difficult circumstances will continue to grow, fostering a better future and a second chance at life. Let's talk a little bit about your own background. Um, you grew up in France, and I know one of the things uh, was that, you know, one of the special things is that you started work at a very young age. You started yes. working at 14 years of old yes. age. And then um, by 18 years of age, you were living also in a brothel um, in, in Paris with uh, a number of Brazilian women and uh, transvestites. Do you think that, you know, kind of childhood growing up at all, that, that you know, teenage years uh, affected, you know, your motivation to do social work later on? I thinking about this time until now. Just f trying to have answer about myself. <laughs> and uh, I just imagine uh, the circumstance, circumstances making me a social worker because I have met something in my life. So, yes, I, I not go to school. My, my parents died very young. So I go, I go in Paris and because the, the, the place where I stay is Pigalle, it's very famous. Kind of red light <laughs> district, yeah? Yes, but before is a lot. Uh, maybe everyone know Moulin Rouge. Yes. It's very famous and so it is uh, the area I stay. And uh, the, the back is all brothers. And uh, most of the girls, they're coming from Brazil. And uh, at this time, I, I'm young, and the information about this problem is not exist. It is just now I understand there are traffic people. And uh, I don't know why, but 18 years old, I, I don't want to continue the, 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 the job, hand worker job. Yes, uh, what were you doing a, back then? I build a uh, house. Yes, construction. construction worker. Yeah but uh, 14 years old. And uh, yes, I want to become a social worker. It is the, the work I like. Uh, I have the opportunity as, as uh, organization, social organization. They have program as NGOs yes. for uh, children who fail their, li their life. Yes. I am one who fail my life. Uh, I am a social case. You decided to seek out organizations that would help you. Yes, exactly. And uh, this is uh, the organization uh, for youth in France. They have one program of two years to learn about the job, but it's whole time learning and whole time uh, practicing. Yes. And so I learn about the, the, the social work, but also to manage 
uh, centers for social uh, programs. Born in France in 1962, little would George have imagined that his challenging childhood would eventually lead him into the path of social work and a life of helping others. It was that training program when he was 18 years old that saw him begin to support French orphans. As of today, George is the only French single male who was granted by the French Juvenile Court the official status of host family for orphans when he was only 21 years old. This would perhaps set the foundation for his continued passion in social work when he came to Vietnam. What uh, condition brought you to Vietnam in 1992? I remember when I'm in the primary school uh, in 72, something like that, I meet the first Vietnamese refugee and uh, I discover for the first time people different than me, different than children in my school because we cross Germany and Germany, we, all children have uh, yellow hair, blue eyes. I remember this time I just thinking when I go to plane, I will go to Vietnam. Yeah. But it is just a children think. Yes. But I do it when I have 13 years old. <laughs> the first time I take my a plane, yes. I directly go to Vietnam. Yes. What happened next when you were here in Vietnam? What uh, you know? I believe you were working. Um, you know, you began to work in social work here in Vietnam too. What did you do? First time, uh, I'm very enjoyed to be here, but I, my objective is not tourism. I like people. And I learned Vietnamese one month. One month I can speak. Oh, wow. You yes, took because one, I want one month it. to speak Vietnamese. I have the motivation. Yes. I want it. No, at this time, I see many people, many, many children in the street. After that, I discovered that only 40% of the children going to school. Mm. And uh, I see, uh, no, education is, is the base for everyone, for any future. Without any education, forget the future. Yeah. And uh, I take all the money I have. I bring how much, I not remember. Uh, she run to school. And uh, after one month, I go in France only for one month. I find one organization I, I'm back ah, with okay. a statute and with a group. And uh, the organization is uh, Children of the World and Human Rights. And uh, we have helped children going to school something as more than 600,000 children. Wow. Yes, during 10 years. One of the reasons that made you, you know, continue your stay here was that you met your wife. When, when I come in, in Vietnam first time, one family I stay, and uh, it is the family I stay, stealing, uh, I call them as my adoptive parents, and uh, my wife uh, working at this place, she's coming in Ho Chi Minh City to work, to make some money, to send the money to the family. But my wife is just a friend, you understand? But uh, the, the best funny time is uh, when I asking her after two years if she, she want to be, to be my, my wife, she say never. <laughs> 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 because, because into my village, no one have foreign husband. I will not the first. <laughs> yes. After two years, I be, become good in Vietnamese. And so I write a letter for her father. Oh, you wrote yeah, a letter yeah, yeah. to your father. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, she, she brings the letter for her father. The father says, OK, and she was, so she accepts. George and his wife, Phan Thi Y, have lived in this Ho Chi Minh City home for more than 20 years. Gia đình là là được bốn người, là vợ chồng và hai đứa con. Một đứa con ngày hôm nay là 21 tuổi rồi. As George shared, he was determined in winning E's hand, in spite of her hesitation at first to marry a foreigner. Giống như là tiếng Việt là ảnh tự học, chứ ảnh không có đi học ở đâu hết. Và giống như là văn hóa Việt Nam cũng vậy, ảnh rất là chịu khó tìm tòi học hỏi. 
In his years of working and living in Vietnam, George has obtained Vietnamese citizenship and sees the country as his home. In his strenuous line of work, he considers his family his safe haven. Đặc biệt là có gia đình mà có vợ tại nhà cũng là một kiểu ổn định tâm lý cho công việc của mình. Tôi hết sức cố gắng đi làm về. Cái công việc tôi bỏ, tôi để phía trước cửa, không có cho vào gia đình. <cười> his wife, above all, understands all the ups and downs of his job. Nói chung là ảnh chọn cái công việc mình thấy là rất là khó với lại là cái công việc mang tính chất là xã hội cho nên là thực ra là cái tiền thu nhập thì nó chỉ đủ nuôi sống gia đình thôi chứ nó cũng không có dư giả gì nhưng mà tại vì ảnh quá đam mê cái công việc của ảnh cho nên ảnh cứ theo đuổi đến bây giờ cho nên là mình không biết nói gì hơn <cười> mình rất là tự hào về ảnh You have a different side uh, to, to AAT as well, and that is the educational programs that you do, where you work uh, with a lot of uh, children and a lot of women, um, not only you know, in this region, but across Vietnam, in helping them to learn more about sexual education as well as um, the prevention of human trafficking. Can you share with us some of the educational programs of AAT? When we care on victim, it's too late. They are victim already. And only care on victim is never <laughs> acting against. And uh, in 2007, I just feeling, okay, if we don't educate people, we will have all time victim. And uh, I start in 2007 a program in school uh, to educate children about uh, sexual uh, abuse risk of sexual exploitation and uh, human trafficking. The program grew up. We have uh, educated more than uh, 100,000 uh, children. The program is uh, open in many con uh, provinces. We just trust now the best prevention is self-prevention. Yes. Self-protection. And it is impossible to evaluate the impact on prevention. But from 2007, we have Uh, apply the program in many schools in Ho Chi Minh City. And what the, the headmasters share with us, they say since we have the program, they no more record teen pregnancy. Mm. Before, they have around 15 children yes. in a, per, per year. And since the program is applied, they not record pregnancy again. Wow. So maybe it's us or maybe because they, they share, I don't know. But anyway, this is one uh, record. Yes can be considered as, as success. Lúc mà chưa có ba ba giọt thì mua trà nhà nhà con rất nhiều. Khoảng nhỏ này là để mọi người vừa chơi, vừa học, vừa ăn, vừa ngủ ở đây. Ba ba giúp gia đình con đóng tiền học, rồi mua đồng phục, mua sách vở cho con. Where dreams bloom, the project specifically supports daughters and young female family members of those who have been or are still sex workers. Since 2015, George, whom the children lovingly call Papa George and AAT, have supported the children with their education. Trước khi được tài trợ, mẹ với con phải đóng tiền học dễ, cô thường nhắc con trước lớp, nên con rất là buồn. Sau khi được ba ba giọt giúp đỡ thì con không đóng tiền học trễ nữa, con đi học tự tin hơn. Mẹ con chỉ được học tới lớp 7 là là không ai đóng tiền cho mẹ con học nữa, mẹ con phải nghỉ học. Từ khi con gặp ba ba lớp mẹ con không phải đi làm khuya, một hoặc hai ba giờ sáng mẹ con mới về, con mới được nằm ngủ với mẹ một ngày. Con được nằm ngủ với mẹ, con cảm thấy rất là vui. The children have chosen flowers as their identity and shared their dreams within this AAT publication. Điều mà em quý nhất là ba ba em cho đi đi học. Tại vì em mơ, em muốn mơ nhiều lắm. Bởi vì lúc mà ba ba cho đi học cũng như là ba ba là cái người mà mở cửa một cánh cửa khác để cho em bước vô để mà tiếp ước mơ của em. Can you tell us about where the project where dreams bloom? This is a group 
beginning with girls of seven years old. And we engage to protect them and to help them and to develop them until 18. This is our limit. But in fact, we not leave them. For example, this uh, year, we have uh, one girl. She's entered the university. And we help them to, bring, to find scholarship for the university. And when they leave our group, they continue to participate in all activities we have. I like to motivate the older one to care on the younger one. The objective for me is to, be, be, to, to make them social activists into their community. Yes. I know a lot of the girls call you Papa George. Uh, how, how does it feel kind of caring for, for, for many of these children? I mean, you know, you're seeing them grow up, you're taking care of them uh, throughout their childhood and teenage years. I think my best memories is when I sit and speak with them. Just speaking about the life, speaking, maybe to go somewhere to, to take uh, ice cream. I, I am a social worker myself, and I, my, my specialty is teenagers. And uh, I have some ability in, social, in um, uh, psychology, and I think I can help them more to, to, just to, to discuss. Today, Rose and Orchid have come to Papa George's home to hang out. It could be as simple as a card game, simple conversations or even talks about self-protection. The children consider George and AAT their family. For George, he cares for the children as if they were his own. For AAT, the support given to the children is not only a way to give them a better future, it is also the organization's hope of a different life for their mothers. Từ cái mà hỗ trợ cho con em họ đến trường như vậy thì cái phần gánh nặng lo về việc học tập nó sẽ nhẹ hơn. Thì cái mà các chị suy nghĩ về hướng bỏ nghề nó sẽ cao hơn hoặc là đi theo một con đường khác nó sẽ cao hơn. Rose and Orchid share a passion for music with Papa George. They're preparing today for a singing performance in their next group activity. It is bonding sessions like these that further boost their confidence and determination to pursue their dreams in life. So we're very happy in our studio today to welcome the two little ones we've just been able to meet in the previous report. For their confidentiality, they are known as Rose and Orchid. Xin chào hai con. Đây là hoa hồng, còn đây là hoa lan đúng không? Dạ. Yeah. Cảm ơn hai con đã dành thời gian để đến với chương trình. Hai con có thể giới thiệu uh, tuổi của mình năm nay là bao nhiêu rồi và uh, mình đã tham gia chương trình được bao lâu? Dạ, con được 10 tuổi, con tham gia chương trình này được 3 năm Con được 12 tuổi, năm nay con tham gia chương trình được 2 năm Trong chương trình uh, của uh, uh, AT và cùng với Papa George thì uh, hai con đã được làm những hoạt động gì? Đã làm vẽ, nấu ăn, đi làm xe, đi công viên tao đài Hai con có nhớ cái thời gian mà uh, mới gặp Papa George thì hai con uh, có, có nhớ cái thời đấy nó như thế nào không? Mình mình có suy nghĩ gì khi mà mới gặp Papa George? Tại con, con nghĩ là Papa George uh, rất là hài đồng, vui tính. Lúc lần đầu gặp Papa George thì cũng nhìn tính tính lại uh, nói chuyện mà con con nghĩ là Papa George không có biết tiếng Việt, với lại thì tiếng Anh độ đó thì của con cũng không có khá lắm không có dám lại tiếp xúc thì thấy um, nhìn thấy tiếp xúc với thì thấy bà ba sốt cũng thân thiện cũng vui vẻ luôn nở một cười trên miệng George do you remember when you met yes. Rose and Orchid Yes of course because this is the, the the beginning of the program three years ago she's one of the first I feel very happy but because it is the beginning, I just don't know how will be the, 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 the next, next steps. 
trong quá trình mà Hoa Hồng và Hoa Lan tham gia vào chương trình à, với Hoa Hồng là 3 năm rồi và Hoa Lan là 2 năm rồi thì hai con có thấy hai con có những cái thay đổi gì không? Dạ có. Thay đổi của con là thân thiện hơn với một với mọi bạn và hòa đồng. Làm với Hoa Lan còn thì lúc mà mới đầu vô thì rất là nhút nhát. Thì không có dám tiếp xúc với mọi người ngại lắm. Thì cái từ từ cái dần dần thì cái mình không có ngại nữa mình mạnh mẽ hơn thì mình tiếp xúc với mọi người bình thường. <cười> The main change is psychological, yes. but psychological will help them for the future to be strong. Exactly. Nói đến tương lai thì là bé Hoa Hồng và Hoa Lan có uh, dự định gì cho tương lai? Các con có những cái giấc mơ gì? Dạ là con ước mơ được làm một bác sĩ Hoa Nhi. À, khoa nhi à, tức là sẽ giúp cho các bạn trẻ khác mà à, nếu mà bị bệnh thì có thể đến với con đúng không? Yeah. <cười> Còn với Hoa Lan? Con thì thích hát giống như cái ca sĩ hát nhạc buồn nhạc này nhạc kia. Okay. Yeah. For George, do you have any hopes and aspiration for the children of AAT, uh, including Rose and Orchid? My first uh, dream is the success their life because this is the objective. We try our best to make their dream come true, coming true and uh, realistic. Uh, it is why after 18 years old, they leave the program, but we continue to, to, to contact them, to follow them, to help them until they enter in life. Yes, exactly. Uh, cảm ơn hai bé Hoa Hồng và bé Hoa Lan rất nhiều. Uh, and thank you, George, for coming here and sharing your story. Um, and, uh, you know, throughout the years with AAT, um, working in different social fields in order to bring a change, a positive change, to the lives of many people here in Vietnam. Thank you. Thank you. Cảm ơn hai bé. I know that one of the things that you have been uh, working on, as we saw in the previous clip, is you've been practicing a song together. Hoa Hồng và Hoa Lan trong thời gian qua là đang tập một bài hát với cả Papa George đúng không? Yeah. Uh, we're very lucky today because uh, Papa George along with the children have brought this performance uh, to Talk Vietnam in order to share with us all of the, their practice in the previous time. Uh, so please George uh, và bé Hoa Hồng và Hoa Lan, uh, mọi người có thể uh, chia sẻ biểu diễn này với uh, chương trình Talk Vietnam được không? Yeah. And our Talk Vietnam now will conclude with the wonderful performance of uh, Gia Đình Nhỏ, or Small Family, uh, of George, Rose, and Orchid. Please enjoy. Hãy subscribe cho kênh Ghiền Mì Gõ Để không bỏ lỡ những video hấp dẫn 